Welcome to this week's Money Meadows podcast, helping gold and silver investors during these turbulent times. Now, here's this week's market wrap with commentary and analysis from the low-cost precious metals dealer voted best in the U.S., Money Meadows Exchange. Welcome to this week's Market Wrap podcast. I'm Mike Gleason. Coming up, we'll hear part two of an interview Money Metals President Stefan Gleason did with Alan James on the Sustainable Money podcast. Stefan gives some more advice on what to look for when choosing a precious metals dealer, when and how to sell when the time comes, and also talks about some of the ins and outs of gold and silver IRAs. Don't miss the conclusion of this informative interview coming up after this week's market update. Precious metals markets got hit this week by a more hawkish than expected Fed. On Wednesday, the Federal Reserve kept its benchmark interest rate unchanged, but signaled it may hike in December. Fed officials also doubled down on their vows to engage in balance sheet reduction, also known as quantitative tightening. The Great Unwind. The Federal Reserve plans to remove the economy's extraordinary sub support, which has been in place since the Great Recession. But what happens when the training wheels come off? It may be in October to remember. The Federal Reserve said next month it will begin to reverse its historic stimulus, which was put in place to help prop up the economy during the Great Recession. Its plan is to begin rolling off its $4.5 trillion balance sheet, which consists mostly of treasuries and mortgage-backed securities. Central bank officials are also hinting that one more interest rate rise this year is likely. The Fed's tough talk spooked gold and silver traders. They unloaded their long positions and drove gold prices back down below the $1,300 level on Thursday. As of this Friday morning recording, gold comes in at $1,297 an ounce for a $25 or 1.9% loss on the week. Silver's down 63 cents or 3.7% since last Friday's close to bring spot prices to $17.02. Turning to the Platinum Group metals, Platinum is lower this week by 3.3% to trade at $940, while Palladium is off 1.2% and currently comes in at $914 per ounce. The disappointing price action in metals over the past few days has been tame compared to the wild swing seen in Bitcoin. The leading cryptocurrency began the month trading at an all-time high near $5,000. But a crackdown on digital currencies by the Chinese government rattled the Bitcoin market, sending the value of a Bitcoin to below $3,000 last Friday. Prices recovered up near $4,000 per Bitcoin this week, despite China's vow to ban all cryptocurrency exchanges. Bitcoin risks becoming a victim of its own success. Higher Bitcoin prices raise the incentives for hackers and cyber terrorists to try to break into and disrupt Bitcoin exchanges. And as more capital flows into the underground asset class, Governments become more interested in regulating or banning it. The banking system becomes more interested in combating or co-opting it. One of the banking establishment's biggest guns is J.P. Morgan Chase CEO Jamie Dimon. He recently bashed Bitcoin as a fraud. The manager of the world's largest hedge fund, Ray Dalio, unleashed similar language on the cryptocurrency. The anti-Bitcoin message sent by financial titans has undoubtedly been received by the U.S. Treasury Department and Federal Reserve. U.S. regulators have thus far taken a mostly hands-off approach to cyber currency markets, but that could change at any time. Even if cryptocurrencies escape further crackdowns by governments, they could be punished by the market. Some analysts believe Bitcoin represents a bubble based on nothing that will ultimately return to its intrinsic value of zero. That's not our own view on Bitcoin, but a Bitcoin crash could certainly spark rotation into alternative currencies that do undeniably have intrinsic, tangible value, such as gold and silver coins. In fact, we're already seeing an uptick of customers paying for their precious metals purchases at moneymetals.com using bitcoins. In the grand scheme of things, bitcoin is still a small influencer compared to the multi-trillion dollar global currency, debt, and equity markets. Precious metals markets will be more affected by what happens to the dollar, to bonds, and to stocks. The stock market is arguably in bubble territory. The S&P now trades at 17.6 times expected earnings, well above its 10-year average of 14.3. At bear market lows, price-to-earnings ratios typically get down 
into the single digits. And during bear markets, stock market indexes typically show major declines when measured in both dollars and gold. Investors who are concerned that stocks have run too far and that cryptocurrencies are too unreliable should make sure they are well diversified into physical precious metals. Here at Money Metals Exchange, we aim to make that task as easy as possible. We are happy to work with new customers who have never bought bullion before. And we are happy to work with Bitcoin enthusiasts who want to lock in their crypto profits in the form of something tangible. You need not even convert your Bitcoins into dollars. We can accept Bitcoin payments directly on our website at moneymetals.com. More common forms of payments such as credit cards, checks, money orders, and bank wires are also accepted. Whether it's dollars or Bitcoins, converting non-tangible forms of wealth into tangible wealth in the form of physical metal can provide stability and security to your finances. Well now, without further delay, let's get to the conclusion of Money Metals President Stefan Gleason's recent interview with Alan James on sustainable money. And we'll pick up the conversation with Stefan giving some incredibly important advice on what to look for when choosing a precious metals dealer and talks about the dangers of what can and has happened to those who don't do the proper due diligence. It is quite rare, but there have been a few horror stories, Tolving being an example of that. We are very competitive. I'm not going to say that on every product at every moment we're the lowest price. That's definitely not the case. Uh, however, I guarantee you that with our company, you're going to get delivery, you're going to get it fast, you're going to get added value of content, and we always over-deliver on our promises, not under-deliver. And that is extremely important, particularly when you, you know, you're asking somebody to, to send money somewhere else with the expectation that, that they're going to receive their gold and silver. Now, some people will go to local dealers, and I don't want to discount that because that's certainly something that people are able to do successfully. I would say that a lot of times the local dealers are at a disadvantage because they're not as sophisticated as a company like ours or, or some of our competitors. They may not be hedging. They may be exposed to the market more than they should be. Or, and they may not have access to the lowest cost inventory, so the pricing may not be the best. Now, in some states also, local dealers, unfortunately, have to collect sales tax on the sale of precious metals, and that's something that we oppose. We, we oppose those laws. We're actually working to, to repeal some of those laws, but it, it does put a lot of local dealers in certain states at a significant disadvantage to an out-of-state dealer such as Money Metals Exchange. And, and we're based in Idaho, and so even customers within Idaho, because there's an exemption for sales taxes on precious metals in Idaho, uh, we don't even have to collect it on, on people who live in Idaho. Stefan, I know there are some consumers that are concerned about uh, several thousand dollars, let's say, worth of gold and silver being shipped to them by one uh, either UPS or the United States Postal Service or FedEx or whatever. How does your company ship, and how reliable is it? We ship virtually everything by the U.S. Postal Service. And, of course, these are boxes that are not marked with their contents, can't source it, very difficult to determine where it was coming from exactly. The return address isn't tied directly to our, to our name. So uh, there's some anonymity there. And I think most wholesalers and retailers also are pretty smart about their shipping practices. Most do use uh, U.S. Postal Service. Some use FedEx or UPS. That's not the most cost effective, and it's also not even the most secure. Believe it or not, U.S. Postal Service has been extremely reliable when it comes to uh, delivering precious metals. We, we've shipped tens of thousands of orders every year and had very few losses. Now, I, I also say in our case, and I think our competitors are similar, we insure everything we ship. And so uh, we have a big insurance policy. If anything gets lost and it isn't received and signed for by the recipient, then there's an insurance claim. And, and, and you know, we, we've had some of those, of course. But it's, it's remarkably reliable. And I hate to say that because it's a quasi-government en enterprise. Uh, it's, <laughs> it kind of rubs me the wrong way to say that the Postal Service does a good job. Uh, I don't think they do in general, uh, uh, but when it comes to our success and getting things successfully shipped quickly and, and cost-effectively, the U.S. Postal Service has, has done very well. The other options are UPS and FedEx, and, and they're not bad either. But 
but they are more expensive and not necessarily faster. And fast delivery is, is actually quite important to people and important to us. We don't like people to, to wait for their precious metals. I think people are already a little bit anxious, particularly on the first purchase, as one of the reasons that they're buying precious metals is they're concerned about what's happening. They're concerned about the dollar. They're concerned about our country. And if it's their first experience buying precious metals, they're probably nervous about that too. So we are really trying very hard to, to not only deliver quickly, but hold the person's hand, make sure the communication is very clear, very frequent, so that they understand what, where, where their order is and when it's arriving. How does the average person learn to trust the dealer organization that supplies or supplied corn or bullion? Doesn't that have something to do with the conversations that take place during the purchase? In other words, the the phone consultation. Yeah. Well, you know, our company, and we're not the only ones, but I th- again, I think we're one of the best when it comes to this, is we're not trying to make a sale. Uh, our, our sales associates are really just they're they're people there to to educate and guide the person there's no pressure it's not a commission situation where they're trying to sell something to you they're there to help you understand the choices and make the best decision for you so i think that that tone is definitely one thing that has been a very uh, important part of our our growth as a business we are not into making a sale selling somebody something they don't want and, of course, we, we don't even deal with and, and, and actively uh, really crusade against this whole rare coin thing, this bait and switch thing that's been giving our industry a bad name and has been ripping a lot of people off. We won't even sell those types of items. Uh, we don't stock them. The only time that you'll see any kind of rare or numismatic coin being sold by us is when the price on that has fallen to basically its melt value, at which time it's actually a pretty good deal to buy. So I think education, content, communication, no pressure, meeting your commitments, just developing that relationship. So uh, look for companies that do that. Okay, so people have invested. They've got their gold and silver or gold or silver, both insurance policy, if you will. The big question is, when do you liquidate? How, how do you, mm-hmm. when do you know when, when, when to sell? Right. Well, well. first of all, if you're buying this because it's financial insurance, I think you'll probably always own some of it. Now, it just so happens that in pri- as priced in dollars, still we think that precious metals are way undervalued to what they will be at in, in the coming years as things unfold. But I would think that people will always own, if once they understand why they own it, they'll always own some. Now, that doesn't mean that they may want to liquidate some of it if the price rises or if they need access to to cash. Some might even, at some point in a really bad situation, you might even, instead of selling it, you might be spending it. It's certainly possible. It's happened in other Failure countries. of the dollar, yeah. Venezuela's got a gigantic you know, implosion going on right now. There was a, there, Argentina's had it, Zimbabwe. So in that kind of situation... That could actually become your money. But at the, at the end of the day, you do want to have the ability to sell it. You want to be able to know, know when and how and where to sell it. Right now, I don't think you should be selling precious metals. You should be buying it. But the bottom line, unless you have a specific reason that you need access to cash, um, the bottom line is that our business and most dealers like us will both buy and sell. And, I mean, we're a dealer. We're not just a retailer. We're a dealer. We buy and we sell all day long. We're buying. Whenever we sell something, we replace our inventory. We always have a positive amount of precious metals available, and as we sell, whenever we sell, we replace it. And, you know, we wouldn't be selling if we couldn't be buying because we don't want to be out precious metals either. So if you were to sell your precious metals, it's really quite straightforward. It's, it's much like buying them. It's You lock a price, and then in, in the case Over of the selling, phone, right? Over the phone or, or on, a we- on our website, you can actually sell on our website back to us, and then you ship us the metals, and then we wire or send you a check or an ACH credit funds to you as soon as we receive them. So it's, it's a pretty straightforward process. You can also go down to your local coin dealer and sell there. And there are other ways to sell, but hopefully people are not looking to sell unless they really have to because – we probably are going to see some pretty big gains uh, in precious metals, as we've seen over the last 15 years. 
but you need to have that liquidity and and we we provide that and so do our competitors and in fact we'd rather buy from our customers than from mints because this is a very very small margin business to begin with if you're selling the the right kind of stuff uh, uh, like bullion um, as opposed to the rare coins which which is you know has huge margins for the sellers but it's not a good deal for the investor so the, that extra 1 or 2% we can make in on buying a uh a product back from our customer instead of having a new one minted is great. So we, we would love to be buying more metal from our customers, even though we don't, frankly don't think it's a good time for them to be selling. But we will absolutely buy and we'll offer them a good price, usually at or above the spot price, depending on the product, and, and we pay quickly. Stefan, briefly, I want you to talk about the types of events that might precipitate liquidating all or just some of your gold and or silver product? Well, if you see a huge gain in dollar terms, uh, then you know it doesn't hurt to, to sell a little bit and take some money off the table. Depends on how much you own. I mean, if you own 100% of your, you know, first of all, d- nobody should have all their money in gold and silver just like they shouldn't have it in anything else. But 10 or 20% is a very reasonable allocation. And we recommend that people do uh, look at having at least that much or uh, in that range, I should say. But, you know, there may be a point where gold has gone to $5,000 an ounce and your ability to, to turn that into some other asset, maybe a piece of real estate or pay off a loan or, or whatever, um, there are reasons to do that. But I would never let go of your full position because part of it is insurance and you never know what's going to happen. If we have a total collapse or breakdown, you're going to be happy that you have gold and silver, I can guarantee it. And uh and if you if we don't have it, I think you're going to be happy as well, as you would be if you'd owned it over the last 15 years. Earlier we discussed this, but is, is there is there a best place to liquidate gold and silver, or a, li- a list of the best places to liquidate gold and silver? I don't think there is a list, unless you do. If you do a search, sell silver or sell gold, you'll you'll probably find again some of our competitors and us. You'll probably find the we buy gold type people, I would steer away from those because they're going to offer you a huge discount to the spot price. Uh, yeah. You want to sell to somebody like us or to one of our competitors who are able to offer you probably close to spot, if not more than spot, for that thing. So stay away from the we buy gold type places. You might get 80%, 70%. Sometimes jewelry, they, they, they give you 40 30% of its melt value. So don't sell to places like that. Sell to somebody like us. Now, we don't buy jewelry, so we'll have to find other options for that. But you want to sell to, to somebody like us who, who makes a market in these things. I've uh, seen a lot of TV ads about owning precious metals in your IRA. How does mm-hmm. that work? Well, it's a great option for people who have most of their money tied up in, in IRAs. First of all, I think it's important for everybody to own some precious metals outside of their IRA. But if a lot of your money is in IRAs, then by all means, make sure you get some precious metals, and and that's a great way to do it. The The way that works is that you cannot take physical possession of the metals without jeopardizing the IRS, considering it to be a distribution and causing your entire IRA to be subject subjected to taxation. And there are some people out there who have been talking about home storage IRAs, and that is a very a risky uh, approach, and we do not recommend it. Uh, we have some customers that want to do that because they want to have it in their house, but I think they're, it's not, not worth the risk considering the IRS is starting to pay attention to that. There was an article recently in the last few days, I believe, uh, in, in the Wall Street Journal, which referenced this. The IRS is starting to pay a little more attention to this concept of a home storage IRA. So let's let's just assume that you don't do that. If the way it works then is that you would set up a IRA with a self-directed IRA provider and then you would roll IRA funds over to that self-directed IRA. And there's several options. We have them on our website. They're independent companies of of us. And so you have your money in your IRA in a self-directed IRA account and then you line up with a dealer like us to purchase precious metals on behalf of your IRA 
and then you have it stored at a depository or other facility, and we have you know recommended uh, storage facilities that we can provide to people. And so your IRA pays for the order, and then the metals are shipped to your IRA's depository account where they are stored securely. And then in reverse, when you want to liquidate, you sell back to us or whoever. You don't have to sell it back to us. If you bought it from us, you can sell it to anyone else. And uh, they, the metals get uh, sent to them or us, and then you're paid. Your IRA is paid back. And then you move on to whatever you're doing, maybe distribute the funds or buy some other asset. The nice thing about owning precious metals in an IRA is that capital gains are sheltered. So unfortunately, precious metals are taxed under federal law at a discriminatorily high 28% long-term capital gains tax rate. Any chance of that changing? Uh, there is a chance. Well, we have a project, a side project called the Sound Money Defense League, which is looking at public policies at the state and federal level. There has been talk about introducing a federal bill to repeal that. Uh, there isn't one pending, but I would say don't plan on it. Uh, but it's certainly unjust. I mean, first of all, this is money. Uh, it's it's not even it's not property. It's money, and the and the gains that you have to 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 the extent you have gains, a lot of them are not real gains. They're nominal gains. They're 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 gains in in the in terms of dollars. But remember, the dollar is being devalued by the day. So, the whole idea of of having to pay taxes on gains on precious metals is is anathema to your financial freedom and the uh, and the concept that gold is money because taxing you for holding money for buying and selling money for you know right. for for exchanging your gold which is money for federal reserve notes which which really isn't money but they call it money and that that's somehow a taxable event when when a lot of that that gain is really just a result of the devaluation of the federal reserve note in proportion or relation to the to the gold so Definitely it's really an unjust system, but uh, I, I wouldn't plan on it, but the IRAs are a great way to uh, to shelter yourself from that taxation. We're about out of time, but I have two more questions I want to get in here quickly. Should you own physical metal or shares of money-backed exchange-traded funds? Okay. Now, uh, if, if you're a trader, then maybe the ETFs aren't a bad idea for you because of the transaction costs, but... There is significant counterparty risk involved in the exchange-traded funds, even if they are gold-backed where they supposedly own the bars or the physical metals somewhere, but you don't own direct title to those things. When you own it in your IRA or when you own it personally, you own direct title, and that's one of the main reasons that you own precious metals is to eliminate risks. So introducing a risk into your insurance investment is not probably a great idea. Uh, and so we, we don't, definitely don't think that you should be uh, putting significant amounts of money into gold or silver ETFs. And, and the fees every year end up being similar, if not higher, to just owning the metal outright and storing it, if that's what you want to do. So ETFs are a proxy for gold. They are, in many cases, supposedly backed by gold, but you don't have direct title, and, and there are risks involved in that. And you can't get Stephen. your hands on it. I think that we've given, we've had a very good educational seminar here, but what sorts of additional things, besides listening to this, what sorts of education can the average person do for themselves to be better prepared uh, to consider precious metals investing? Well, I, first of all, I'd encourage people to get on the Money Metals Exchange email list by going to moneymetals.com. We publish several articles a week of original content and commentary on the markets, on the Federal Reserve, things that are impacting your money and your investments. We do a weekly podcast. We have a lot of great guests. So that's one thing. Get educated. Start looking at some of the websites, including ours. Get up to speed. But most importantly, start by owning a little bit of precious metals. If you don't own them already, uh, get started as, as soon as possible. You really can't afford to wait. And I, I've found that just putting a piece of silver in somebody's hand, it kind of gets a process started in their mind. You start thinking about what is value, what is money, what gives money its value, what is the system of the Federal Reserve that we have, how does this all work? That, that's how it started for me about 18 years ago. So I think just getting into the market and start paying attention and you're going you're gonna to make lots of progress. Stefan Gleason, President of Money Metals Exchange, 
That's at moneymetals.com. This has been another edition on our Sustainable Communities Summit entitled Gold and Silver Buying Made Easy, and I hope that we were able to make it easier for you. I'm Alan James. Thanks for joining us. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview, and that will do it for this week. Please join us next Friday for our next weekly Market Wrap podcast. Until then, this has been Mike Leeson with Money Metals Exchange. Thanks for listening, and have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining us for this week's Money Metals podcast. Be sure to come back next week. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast through iTunes for answers to all of your questions or to discreetly and securely buy or sell gold or silver coins, bars, and rounds. Call 1-800-800-1865 or visit www.moneymetals.com. Our knowledgeable and no-pressure specialists are standing by between 7 a.m. and 5.30 p.m. Mountain Time, Monday through Friday. Or you can lock in your order online, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Again, visit us at www.moneymetals.com or call 1-800-800-1865.